Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Today we've got a lot of heated questions to get into, and our first story of the day is from annual I9459, am I the jerk for telling my pregnant wife to stop acting like a child? I, 35 year old male, and my wife, 33 year old female, are currently expecting our first child in December. I live in chronic pain right now due to a slew of health issues. I also work a job where I'm on my feet constantly. I can't get a new job right now due to personal reasons, but I plan to as soon as possible. My wife quit her job right after we found out we were expecting. We always plan this. The problem is, she's gotten really lazy. I understand pregnancy's hard, but it's gotten to the point that she won't even make food or clean the house sometimes. She's been whining and complaining constantly since the moment she took the test. She sounds like a child. I'm hungry, I'm sore, my head hurts, I'm sick, I can't poo, etc. I understood that these things are normal during pregnancy, so as much as it annoyed me, I bit my tongue. The second I'd get home every night, she'd want me to do something for her. She expected me to cook and clean as soon as I got home every night. The straw that broke the camel's back happened a couple days ago. I had just gotten home from a 10 hour shift and was having a flare up. I just wanted to have a bath and relax because I was in so much pain. I told her I'd had a terrible day and to just door dash something. I rarely let her do this because those fees are freaking ridiculous so I thought it would be a treat. But she said that she can eat only home cooked meals and that everything else makes her sick. This is where I may be the jerk. I yelled at her and told her I've had the worst day and she needs to stop complaining and be an adult for once. She started crying. I immediately apologized over and over again, but she left anyway. A couple hours later, my mother-in-law called me and called me a misogynistic runt and a slew of other names. I hung up because I don't need that. Now the beans are spilled and all the women in our family are mad at me, and my wife still won't freaking speak to me. So, am I the jerk? Would you guys agree with me when I say that outright OP definitely a jerk move for blowing up like that? But like at the same time, understanding that people are under pressure or their stress and OP said that they immediately started apologizing and that this situation goes from OP being the jerk to everybody being the jerk the moment the mother-in-law called and started going right for OP's head. With both sides being described here as maybe not having the best communication or teamwork skills. OP having chronic pain, the wife obviously being pregnant, would you guys agree when I say that all around every side is a jerk and that there's some serious communication that needs to be done here? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from AITA Angie. Am I the jerk for leaving my sister and her husband on the side of the road? I came from a very sex positive household. My parents taught my sister and I about sex, sexuality and their non-vanilla lifestyle from a young age. They were very affectionate and touchy with each other in public and didn't and still don't seem to care about others' opinions. They lived a very non-conventional lifestyle and weren't afraid to flaunt it. On one hand, my parents never treated sex as a shameful subject. Therefore, I received a very comprehensive, inclusive form of sex education. On the other hand, I think I was introduced to many topics at a very young age. In many ways, my sister Angie turned out like my parents. She proclaims that she's sex positive and has no qualms with openly discussing sex in great detail at every opportunity. She believes that if a person's uncomfortable, they must be a conservative virgin or prude who clearly hates all form of self-expression. Her words. My wife Zara isn't a huge fan of PDA. Other than hand-holding or occasional kisses on the cheek, She isn't comfortable with doing much in public. We're also not the type of people to discuss our sex life with people, much less family. Angie doesn't like Zara. She believes that Zara is too conservative or prudish for our family. She often makes fun of Zara for looking embarrassed when she's discussing in excruciating detail about sex. Zara barely says anything, but Angie still manages to make fun of her. I don't speak to Angie much. Recently, Zara's brother passed away. Angie's husband Bill knew his partner and wanted to pass on his condolences. Zara, Angie, Bill, and I all wanted to attend his wake. Instead of taking separate cars, Angie suggested that we all go together. To be honest, I was not a huge fan of this idea. It was a two hour drive from where we lived to our destination. Also, we were planning on leaving very early so that we could help set up. 
and we were planning to leave late. We still managed to do it. At first, everything was alright. Understandably, no one was speaking in the car and it was very quiet in the car. Most people were keeping to themselves or sleeping. Midway through the drive, Angie and Bill start making out in the back seat of our car. When I say making out, I mean full on making out. They were pushing up against the car door and making all sorts of noises. Zara and I were extremely uncomfortable. I pulled over and started yelling at Angie. I told them that I was disgusted by their behavior and that they're acting like horny little teenagers. Angie said that they were grieving. I yelled at them to get out of my car. At first they were protesting, but I was so angry and so tired of them already. I told them to find their way home by themselves. My parents think that I went too far with them and that Zara needs to loosen up in order to be part of this family. Obviously, Angie and Bill are still extremely pissed. I think OP and their wife are both not the jerk here. I have no qualms with being sex positive, but everybody has their own personal comfort and limits. And I think anybody needs to understand that openly making out in the back of somebody else's car is a bit past that cutoff of doing without knowing whether or not it's acceptable or okay. I mean, if you ask me what sex positive means, it means understanding that it's not a shameful thing and understanding protection, consent. It's not this crutch that you can use, therefore you can get away with doing whatever you want in public shamelessly. Imagine being told essentially, unless you can deal with watching us stick our tongues inside each other's mouths, you're just too prudish for this family. I'd be like, you know what, maybe I'll just keep my distance then. Our next story is from Marfid Meal Help. Am I the jerk for wanting my son to be treated equally and able to enjoy family meals with cousins? My son is 9 and has avoidance slash restrictive food intake disorder. We're working with many therapists in all areas, but it's slow developing. He has very few safe foods and they're all super processed junk food. He used to have more foods, but when it changes or tastes different, he'll no longer eat it. He ate one sour grape seven years ago and still cries at the thought of eating another. It's bad. Anywho, we used to have family meals with my wife's extended family relatively often. A few times a month, maybe. We stopped when we realized eating in groups was making our son worse. Recently, we've had a huge milestone, meaning he can eat in public again. He's super excited about it, and we've eaten out a few times since. McDonald's mostly, but still in public. Anywho, my wife called her sister and asked if we could join their family meals again, maybe just once a month to build his confidence. She said yes initially, and my wife told her we'd bring his food up so he could eat comfortably. My sister-in-law then backtracked, saying that wasn't going to be feasible. She claimed it was too unfair on the other kids to have to eat proper meals while he gets to snack on junk food, which we obviously understand, but the youngest of the children is eight, and I feel like at that age, it's easy to explain that he has additional needs. Which I mentioned to her, my wife got upset and left me to deal with the conversation. I told my sister-in-law straight that this wasn't him being treated better. It was a serious medical condition and it wouldn't be that hard to explain to the rest of the children that he has a different diet to them. She got increasingly upset, claiming that her children shouldn't have to be forced to watch him eat nicer food. I then told her my son shouldn't be forced to miss out on family meals, at which point she hung up. She later messaged my wife to inform her I was rude and wouldn't take no for an answer. My wife said I should have just accepted it when she hinted at not wanting him there, but I disagreed. I think he's just as deserving as everyone else. She got annoyed with me, then, and now I'm just wondering if what I said was really that bad. Am I the jerk? I think everything that's gone on here from OP side of things definitely makes them not the jerk. If anything, I feel like it would be better for those other kids to be exposed to people like OP's son who have conditions that maybe they don't immediately understand, but it's like a learning opportunity for them to become empathetic and understand that other people are afflicted with different things. I don't know, maybe I'm overly optimistic as to how an 8 year old would handle these things. I mean at the end of the day, one kid is getting a bunch of McDonald's and the other is getting some not as enjoyable meal. I will say though that I think OP is the jerk if they continue to try to force the issue, if straight up the sister-in-law just doesn't want to do it. This next story is from New GF Throwaway 11. Am I the jerk for asking my new boyfriend to spend less time with his late wife's family? I, 30 year old female, have been dating my new boyfriend, 33 year old male. We'll call him Bill. 
for about five months. Bill lost his wife Meg in a car accident last year. They were together for 10 years, married for five, and had a son together. Bill's son is now three. I feel like Bill and I are really clicking, and I like where our relationship is heading. He's met my family and gets along with them. My one problem is Bill still spends a lot of time with Meg's family. He plays softball with Meg's uncle and has gone to Meg's grandmother's house for dinner with his son a bunch of times. He brings his son to see Meg's mother pretty much every week. Bill has never said no to coming with me to my family's house and he's asked me to go with him to Meg's family's house. I haven't gone with him to Meg's family, it feels weird. Well, the other night I asked him if he could spend less time with Meg's family. He got very quiet and asked why. I said it made me feel like we couldn't move forward if he was still always seeing Meg's family. He said I was ridiculous and that he was going to separate his son from his grandparents and that he views Meg's uncle as one of his best friends. We got into a big fight, but I still feel he spends too much time with them. Some of my friends agreed that I'm ridiculous. Am I the jerk? I think OP is the jerk here because I don't really understand what the issue here is. Are they insecure that the old family is going to steal Bill? Is OP afraid that Bill's going to cheat on them with Meg's family? I mean, these are people that Bill is associated with and gotten to know for 10 years. I mean, they probably considered them as family for a decade. And now because they're in a new relationship, you expect them to drop what they consider to be family? I think it's pretty freaking ridiculous and I think OP's definitely the jerk. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. That said, our next story is from ConfidentBug459. Am I the jerk? I yelled at a student's dad and told him to freak off. I, female 18, look exactly like my sister, female 22. Whenever we meet new people, they always assume we're identical twins. We most definitely are not. My sister just finished her degree and is now a teacher. I'm working at a restaurant that has skimpy uniforms. I'm having a quick vape on a break and some guy walks by with his kid. I see his kid grab his dad and say something. The dad walks back to me and says that I should be ashamed of myself for doing this kind of work when I work with kids. I tell him he's mistaken and he's thinking of my sister. He says he's met me before and he knows that I don't have a twin. No crap, Sherlock. I tell him that it's not really his business, but we're sisters, not twins. He says he's going to go into my school and report me for this. I've had enough. My break was over, so I raised my voice, told him to go ahead, and told him to get freaked. He looked all shocked. I told my coworkers and they all think it's funny. I told my mom and she says I should have handled it better because it could affect my sister's job. My dad says I was polite twice and that's enough. My sister's pissed at me and isn't looking forward to going to work after Thanksgiving. Question: Why was this guy in a place that's considered inappropriate for kids with their kid? Second of all, this has been kind of a trend I've seen recently where people expect people who work with kids, whether it's a preschool, daycare type thing, or a straight up teacher to, when they're off the clock, always still be in teacher mode. Always be dressed up in some colorful dress with ABC123 on the skirt, nicely done hair, teachers being patron saints outside of the classroom. I think even if this was the teacher that works with kids and off the clock they're doing a second job at Hooters or something, that there's nothing wrong with that at all because they're trying to survive. Shoot, even if they were just doing it for fun, there's nothing wrong with it. What matters is, are they doing good and are they respectful and appropriate in the classroom? Our next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for coming home early from meeting boyfriend's parents? My boyfriend and I went to see his parents for the first time this weekend. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. We were supposed to stay Saturday, Sunday, and fly back afternoon Monday. I'm riding this Sunday night, already back in my own bed. My boyfriend's parents greeted us at the airport and brought us home. They then proceeded to ask me if I had drugs in my bag, and I was pretty shocked because who asks that? I said only Tylenol, and they nodded and showed us to our rooms, which meant I got the guest room and my boyfriend was to sleep in his old room. His parents were serving dinner, and during dinner, I was asked to pay for my portion of the Thanksgiving dinner, $30. I was pretty shocked and angry because who does that? I've never been asked to pay for someone's ingredient fees when I guessed at their place. I didn't answer, and then confronted my boyfriend in his room and asked why I was asked to pay. 
He said it's something they ask of their friends as well. When they have a barbecue, they ask people to pay their portion. Honestly, I'm shocked they have friends. I reminded him that he's eaten in my place dozens of times and was never asked to pay. He claimed if they asked, he would have, but they never did. Because it's rude to do that to a guest. But his mom came and got me and escorted me to my room. I was fuming and looking for tickets home and texted my boyfriend to say I was going home tomorrow. He called me and begged me to stay, saying his family already don't like me for not agreeing to pay for dinner, and I'm just making it worse. I ignored him and rebooked an early flight, which was very expensive, and got a cab to the airport in the morning. I told my friends this, who had confirmed they've never been asked to pay for a meal while they were a guest. And if they were struggling, why even invite me over? Is this normal practice? Their house was pretty big, I don't think it was a money thing for them. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'd want to hang around very much around a family that is that penny-pinching. If you are an invited guest, there is no way that you're supposed to pay unless you are told up front before you come over. If they're having a barbecue grill and they have like a bunch of food that they got, maybe a $5 fee, sure, tell me up front. I don't mind pitching in for that. You know, you're saying, oh, we're going to have a big Thanksgiving dinner, you want to help pitch in and pay for the stuff? Sure, then that's a little bit more acceptable. You can't drop a $30 fee on their head when they're there, though. That's so tacky. Our next story is from No Conference 1519. Am I the jerk for refusing to leave the house during my wife's book club? My wife has a weekly book club with her friends, and I'm really happy that she takes the time to enjoy our hobbies and connect with friends. The issue is she volunteered to host the club in our home, and I'm not allowed to be there while they're meeting. While I don't mind busying myself for an hour once in a while, They meet weekly for three to four hours at a time. She says there's a no men rule because the women share private things with each other, which I understand and respect, but I also don't think it's fair for them to expect me to get kicked out of my own home for most of my weekend, especially since I work six days a week. We both work, but I work more days, and I only have that one Saturday off. I also prefer to spend the extra time playing video games, so it's not like I can just take my computer to Starbucks with me. I've offered to put on headphones and stay in the bedroom, but she still says the women will still feel my presence. I've asked if the women could take turns hosting, but she says all of the women have reasons why they can't host, including, which I thought was kind of irritating, some of their husbands not wanting to leave the home for so many hours. I've also asked if they could meet at a coffee shop and even offered to help pay for them to rent a meeting room somewhere, but she said they felt more comfortable in a home. This has been going on for two months now, and last week I told my wife I couldn't keep this up anymore and she had to find a solution herself because I've given her so many options already and gave her the heads up that I wasn't leaving this weekend. I think she thought I was bluffing, but come Saturday I stayed home. Out of respect, I stayed in the bedroom when everyone came over, but they knew I was there and I could tell the meeting got cut short because of that. My wife and I had a huge row afterwards and here we are now. She's not talking to me and I'm pretty pissed, but I'm not sure who's really in the wrong here. I don't think OP's the jerk here. OP's try to give every concession that I think is more than reasonable, which is I will be completely out of your way, headphoned up, you won't hear me, you won't see me, it's like I won't even be there, and that's not good enough. I mean, it gets to the point where you start wondering just what is going on here, because it just seems a little too restrictive. Like, what are you doing that I cannot be around at all for? Like, no chance. It's probably more of a gossip meeting than it is a book club. Our next story is from Throwa334356. Am I the jerk for not wanting my husband to walk his sister down the aisle? My husband Mike, 37, is the eldest in his family. He's pretty close with his sister Beth, 28, and they spend almost all week together. Beth had issues with her father growing up. She went no contact with him after he took her first car and damaged it. She only remained in contact with Mike since everybody else judged her for going no contact. She's getting married to her fiancé of three years. From what I understand, she and her dad are slowly getting reconciled, but she made it clear that she wants him to take no part in the wedding. She asked Mike if he could walk her down the aisle and he agreed. I have to say that I was taken aback and it felt a bit odd for me because her dad is alive. They're on speaking terms again, he's gonna be there at the wedding, so the logical thing to do is have him walk her down the aisle. The role isn't for her older brother, but her father. 
Not to mention how father-in-law will feel about it. I brought this up with Beth, and she had an attitude and implied that I was just saying this and objecting because of how I feel about the situation, not how our traditions should be practiced. We got into an argument, and I went home. Mike thinks I'm being unreasonable, and possibly causing him to miss something so sentimental, and that if anything, he feels honored to be asked to do this for her, and said that I should stop worrying about what others might say. Now we're having this conflict, three of us, and cannot seem to reach a solution. I mean, I don't know about their traditions, their beliefs, but personally, I feel like it comes down to what the bride and the groom want. If the bride wants a specific person to walk them down the aisle, whether that's their dad, their brother, their grandfather, their mom, a sister, a friend, I don't think it matters. What matters is what the bride wants. At the end of the day, in my eyes, the only goal is getting married and celebrating it how you want to. So I think OP is the jerk. This next story is from my throwaway account. Am I the jerk for not giving my stepsister my college fund, although I won't need it? I, 18 year old female, have a stepsister Lily, female 19. We both finished high school, different school system here, this summer. We both want to attend university the next year and are currently doing other stuff and still living at home. Lily is my stepdad's, male 58, daughter. They moved in with mom, female 52, and me two years ago. My ex-boyfriend Daniel, 19 of three years and I, planned on applying to the same, pretty prestigious and expensive uni and want to study the same subject, so we still would have been able to be close to each other and continue our relationship. Daniel, Lily and I all attended the same school and at our prom night I caught them making out in the back. I was of course devastated. Daniel tried to apologize to me and to work things out, but I don't think he can make up for this betrayal and I ended things. Since then, him and Lily are together, I sometimes hear them screwing at our place. None of my business anymore, we luckily don't share a room. Daniel, however, still plans to apply to Uni A, while I don't because of him being there. I found another great uni that'll accept me, I know because it only depends on the GPA, and isn't as expensive, therefore I'll only need a small part of my college fund. My mom set this fund up with my dad, and because they both earn pretty good money, it has enough money for multiple years at whatever uni I'd like. Meanwhile, Lily has almost no money saved up for college because her parents didn't set up a fund in time. Now the issue, Lily now wants to attend uni A to keep the relationship with Daniel, but doesn't have enough money without taking a large loan. Therefore, she asked me for almost my whole fund since I won't need it anymore. I don't want to, because I have other purposes for my money, but she and my stepdad are calling me a selfish brat that isn't capable of sharing. My mom says it's my money and I get to decide what to do with it. Daniel recently also started texting me and pressuring me into giving Lily my money so they can stay together. Am I the jerk for not giving Lily the money, even though I don't necessarily need it, but she does? So, I think OP is clearly not the jerk here, and it has nothing to do with being cheated on, them being in a relationship, whether or not OP likes Lily or not. The bottom line is it is OP's money, and they don't have any reason to give it away to somebody else unless they specifically want to. Unless OP's feeling mighty generous and wants to spend thousands of dollars to cover Lily's education, they don't owe them anything at all. Our next story is from throwaway a 2937 u Am I the jerk for buying more souvenirs for one of my grandsons? I have two sons, Samuel and Alex. Samuel has a son, Adrian, 9, and Alex has a son, Neil, 11. Samuel earns a lot more than Alex, and this summer he decided to send me on vacation as a gift for my birthday. While I was there, I bought a souvenir for Neil, but since Samuel was the one who sent me to this vacation, I decided to buy several more souvenirs for Adrian. After I got back, I gave their souvenirs to my grandsons, and I could tell that Neil looked upset. Later, I heard Neil and Alex talking, and Alex explained to him that I gave Adrian more gifts, because his dad gave me the money for this vacation. Neil didn't say anything to me, but he looked a little sad the entire time. Later that night, Alex told me that I'm a jerk for not treating them equally. I think OP is the jerk here because they're not buying souvenirs for their son who paid for the vacation. They're buying souvenirs for their grandkids who have no actual attachment here. They're 11 and 9 years old. They themselves didn't pay for this trip. Why should they be treated differently? 
and take a step back and look at the optics. You're gonna treat one grandson better because the father's more well off and buys you more stuff? Sorry, Neil, you're only gonna get one gift for Christmas. Your father just couldn't afford to get me nice enough stuff this year. Our next story is from Physical Emu1347. Am I the jerk for telling my nephew that he was fat? I, 30 year old female, was having dinner at my sister's, 40 year old female's house. During dinner, I asked my nephew, 14 year old male, how he was liking high school and if he made any new friends. He shrugged and didn't seem enthusiastic about giving me an answer. My sister started pressuring him to answer. She then started teasing him about having a crush on someone and asking what their name was. My nephew got very upset and snapped at my sister, saying that he didn't want to answer because he didn't have any friends, and even if he did have a crush on someone, no one would want him because he was fat. My nephew is 256 pounds. He likes to play video games and spends most of his free time laying on the couch, eating chips and gaming. Now, my entire family is very large. My brother-in-law is 450, sister is 270. They never pay attention to what they eat and eat when they want. I used to be 300 pounds, but started dieting and exercising and I'm now 225. I understand the struggle with binge eating and how difficult it is to lose weight. So after hearing the anger and disgust in his voice, I told him that he was right. He was fat. I told him he had two options. He could either start watching what he ate and start an exercise routine to lose weight, or he could keep overeating and stay fat. If he wanted help in losing weight, I could offer him advice, but if he decided he didn't want to lose weight, then he needed to learn how to own being fat. Because unless he made some drastic changes, he'll just keep getting bigger. So if he didn't want to make those changes, then he needs to start learning how to accept being fat and how some people won't like him because of his weight. The choice was his to make. My nephew got up and stormed off when I finished talking. Later that day, my sister called me and told me that my nephew had been crying because of the stuff I had said and wanted me to apologize for being mean to her son. I didn't think I said anything cruel or unreasonable, but I figured I'd check. Am I the jerk? So I completely understand what OP was trying to do here, but I don't think it was the right time to do so. I think the kid was kind of opening up a little bit and saying basically how it feels and how they're being treated in regards to their weight. So OP immediately jumping in there and saying, well, you're fat. Here's what you can do about it. If you want to change it, you can change it. If not, you're going to just keep getting bigger. Let me know. It just wasn't the right time. OP should have revisited it after the fact, reached out to them privately and discussed it, not in a public forum. If after the fact, when the kid was by themselves, if OP reached out and said, hey, I know exactly what you're going through. It all starts with wanting to improve, wanting to change, and then laying out the whole spiel. That would have been infinitely better. But in this situation, OP was the jerk. Am I the jerk for driving my sister to her gender reveal appointment despite her husband's disapproval? I'm male, 33. My parents are deceased. I have a younger sister, female, 25, who's married and expecting. I'm also married, but I don't have kids due to health issues on both sides. I'd visit and check on my sister from time to time. I'm not on great terms with her husband, male 31, but we're civil to each other. She started calling asking for my help more often since she got pregnant. I have no issue with this, but brother-in-law thinks I'm being too involved in my sister and the baby's life. Last week, I got a call from my sister asking if I could take her to the doctor's office. It was a gender reveal appointment. I asked why her husband didn't take her, and she explained that he was supposed to drive her but he had to attend his mom's birthday, and asked her to reschedule but she refused. I took her to the appointment, but brother-in-law called and was furious, saying I shouldn't have gotten involved, because now I'd caused him a precious moment in finding out if he was going to have a girl or a boy. Basically saying that I took this experience away from him and calling me weird for being too involved in my sister's marriage and sticking my nose in it to the point where I was making the doctor think I was her husband. I told him the reason the doctor thought I was her husband was because of his absence and lack of commitment as a father. He blew up at me and I hung up on him. My wife said that she gets that I want to help my sister out but said that I might have gone too far and should have respected brother-in-law's boundaries. I think OP's not the jerk here, and I think OP was just being a good sibling. 
they're helping out whenever they can. The bottom line here is if there's anybody that the husband needs to take this up with, it's their wife, not OP. The wife was solely the one that was dead set on getting to that doctor's appointment and not canceling. It's not OP's fault that they were willing to drive their sister to a doctor's appointment. Am I the jerk for using a spray bottle to train my nephew? My nephew is a rainbow baby. My sister had a lot of trouble conceiving and he was kind of a miracle. She was 42 when she finally managed to give birth. She was on bed rest for the last three months of her pregnancy. My nephew's now six and while I love him, he is a monster. He throws tantrums when things don't go his way. He screams if he loses playing a game. He refuses to understand why you can't ride my seven-year-old St. Bernard. And he thinks any food is his. My husband's diabetic and he loves cookies. I found a bakery that makes amazing sugar-free cookies, but they're expensive. I budget for them because my husband deserves his treats when he gets home from work. My sister was visiting and my nephew was running around like a squirrel. He tripped and started crying, so my sister picked him up. He saw the cookie container on the counter and started asking for some. I said no, that they were special cookies for his uncle. I offered him a regular cookie or some fruit, but he got all upset that he was being denied. My sister asked if he could please have a cookie. I relented and gave him one. He took a bite and said it was yucky and threw it on the ground. I was a little upset. A little while later, he came back and asked for another cookie. I said no. My sister said to just give him one. I told her no, he wasted the last one. He started screaming that he wanted a cookie. I stood my ground. He eventually went away. Next time he came, he didn't ask. He just went for the container. I grabbed the spray bottle I used to keep the cat off the counter. I gave him a couple of squirts and said no. He got startled and ran away. My sister said her son isn't an animal to be reprimanded with water. The next time he came into the kitchen, I put my hand on the spray bottle. He didn't even look at the counter and he went away. My sister called my parents to tell on me for treating her kid like that. They're mad at me for not giving in to the poor baby. I think OP's not the jerk here because I feel like it's pretty obvious this kid was not respecting OP's house or their rules and their own sibling wasn't going to discipline their child. It might be stooping to the same level as how you'd treat a cat, but it's effective and it's not like a couple squirts of water in the kid's face is gonna harm them at all. What do you guys think? Are you the jerk for spraying a rowdy nephew that won't listen to you in the face with some water? I'd like to know what you guys think for sure in the comments down below. Our next story is from R Nevermore. Am I the jerk for calling the police on my fiance? Last night, my 35-year-old male, fiance, 38-year-old female, left in the evening to give a friend's son a ride back to his home. She implied she'd be home before 9. She left at around 7.45. 10.15 rolled around and she still wasn't home. I texted and she apologized to me, saying that her friend's son was actually in the next town over, maybe 30 minutes away, and she was coming home now. 11.45 rolled around and she still hadn't come home, so I called her to no answer. Texted her, no response. I was getting very upset. 12.30 rolled around and still no response and no answer to my phone calls. I was extremely angry. 1.30 rolled around and my anger had completely transformed into worry. Not answering my calls and texts not read. Around 1.45, I called the police. I've always heard that the first 24 hours of someone being missing is the most important, so I didn't want to delay. I asked them to let me know if there had been any traffic accidents involving her car and the operator told me that they would put out the word and send some cops to check along the route she would travel. I called all the hospitals in the area to check if she'd been checked in, and I waited outside watching the road for her car for three hours, partially because I didn't want the kids to hear me on the phone with hospitals, and secondly because I was sick with worry. At 7 a.m., she came home. She apologized for being out and said she had no excuse. She was driving home and felt tired like she was falling asleep at the wheel, so she pulled over to the side of the road to sleep. When she did that, she found out her brand new phone had stopped working. She says she napped anyway because it was the responsible thing to do, and then came home at 7am to bring the kids to school and get to work on time. I immediately called the police and told them that she had come home safely and gave them the case number and told them to stop searching, which they did. My fiancé brought the kids to school and left for work. I set out to start cleaning. Cleaning de-stresses me sometimes, and I got a call from a policeman asking where she worked. 
I told him and asked why, and I was informed that it was their policy to check on the person's wellness after a missing person is found. I asked them not to go by her work, but to give her a call instead. He said he couldn't promise. My fiance is relatively new to her job. A police officer showed up and asked to speak with her. She's now enraged at me for calling the police and sending a cop to work and making her look bad. She's saying I overreacted and that she wasn't missing and that I was punishing her for doing the responsible thing and not driving while drowsy. She's saying that she's never going to leave the house again except for work, but she's afraid I'm going to call the cops on her again. So did I overreact? Should I have waited two days like she suggests? Absolutely not the jerk. And whether or not OP has previously agreed, never listen to that advice. Thank God I don't know from experience, but I can tell. After the fact, if something did go bad, you would never forgive yourself for not doing something sooner. It would be so incredibly hard to move past. And this is a completely legitimate reason to get worked up and worried and call the cops. They went totally missing on their way home at night. That circumstance is probably up there on the common ways that people even disappear. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Happy Single Dwarf. Am I the jerk for telling my sister-in-law that I'll call the cops for child abandonment the moment she steps out of the house? Me, 25-year-old male, my brother Jack, 27-year-old male, and his wife Jill, 25-year-old female. It all started when Jack and Jill got pregnant. Their lease almost ended and my parents invited them to stay at our house. The day they came, Jack asked me why I hadn't moved out of my room yet. I was confused, like, what the freak? and he told me that he and Jill will be at my room, and I go to the guest room. I refused, but my parents got mad and we got into a fight. I lost and ended up in the much smaller guest room. Then Jill had a problem with my cooking. I eat scrambled eggs with mozzarella and avocado every day for breakfast, and she couldn't stand the smell. She asked me to stop. I refused. My parents got involved. I had to stop. There were problems with other food too, and I had to stop cooking them. I was told I must be more accommodating because she was pregnant. Like, that's my problem. Then Jill started to boss me around. We were alone for 8 hours while my parents and Jack worked. She obviously thought I'd be her personal maid. I refused. She threw a temper tantrum, and like always, and I again had a big fight with Jack and my parents. I was told that she had a high risk pregnancy and was on bed rest, and I'm a jerk for not helping her. I told Jack that he knocked her up, it's his responsibility. I stood on my ground, and in the end, Jill's cousin came to help her sometimes. Then Jill gave birth to my nephew. I congratulated them when they came home, and that's it. I don't like babies, so I mostly keep to myself now. But that doesn't stop Jill to ask for favors. Please watch the baby while I take a quick shower. Please watch it while I make myself some food, etc. I always refuse, and we always have new fights over and over again. It all came to a head last Friday when she asked me to watch my nephew while she goes to the pharmacy for baby formula. I refused. She got mad and we had a fight. She grabbed her purse to go anyway, and I told her that the moment she walks out that door, I will call the police for child abandonment. I was serious and she knew it. She broke down and screamed what a horrible human being I am. Then she ran to her room. She had a complete mental breakdown. When Jack and my parents came home, we had the biggest fight yet. Jack accused me of hating Jill and my nephew upon other things. I told him I refused to bond because they'll weaponize him against me. My parents told me enough is enough, that they can't believe they raised such a selfish human being, and that either I help or I move out. I'm thinking of the second option. Am I the jerk? I work from home and pay 50% of all household expenses, including mortgage. Jack and Jill don't contribute anything for expenses. This overall just sounds like, from all angles, kind of awful. If OP really is paying for half of all of the house bills and necessities, including the mortgage, they're not responsible to play babysitter for somebody else that's staying there. Just because OP is related doesn't mean that they have to help out. If this was just a roommate who was renting that room and paying for half of everything, Would they be expected to have to take care of the baby sometimes, watch the baby, watch what they cook? I don't think so, and therefore I think it's unfair to expect that from OP as well. And besides, OP was already forced to give up every other concession, they already got shoved in a small tiny room, 
Our next story is from throwaway679991. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for fixing the babysitter's laptop? I, single mom of two, hired a babysitter after I started working a new job. I used to do work from home for two years. My kids are 8 and 6, the babysitter 17. She brings her laptop with her to study, which is perfectly okay with me as long as she keeps an eye on the kids. Yesterday I came home and the babysitter showed me her laptop that got broken by my youngest. I was shocked and asked how this happened and she said that she left the laptop in the living room and went to make the kids lunch but my youngest grabbed it and ran with it until he dropped it and broke the screen. I said that was horrible and apologized to her but stated it was her fault for leaving the laptop within reach of children. She said she thought my kids were old enough to know not to touch other stuff. I explained how they might have thought it belonged to us since it was in our house. She asked if I could pay for it to get fixed but I refused and insisted it was her problem, not mine. She ranted about having exams soon and not having enough money to get it fixed. We argued, and I had to tell her to go home after she persisted. Later on, I got a call from her dad basically blaming the whole thing on me and demanding I pay to get the laptop fixed, but I still refused. Now she's refusing to come again unless I pay her for the laptop repair, even though I paid her in advance to watch the kids. Now, I'm not a parent myself, so I don't necessarily know exactly what you can and can't expect from a 6-year-old and an 8-year-old. I would hope that you could entrust them to not just grab a laptop and go running around with it, let alone the fact touch somebody else's laptop that you have no knowledge of you ever owning. The bottom line here is the kid was the one that grabbed the laptop and went off running with it, and your kid is the one that broke it. I think it's only fair to pay for it to get fixed, as much as it sucks. Our next story is from AITA Throw Language. Am I the jerk for refusing to stop speaking Chinese around my stepfamily? I, 16 year old female, grew up speaking both English and Chinese, Mandarin but I'm just gonna say Chinese to keep it simple, at home. My dad is white but lived in China for a while so he understands pretty well and my mom's learned English but is still most comfortable with her first language. I'm fluent in both but I'm close with my mom's family and have a lot of friends from immigrant families, so I use them interchangeably. My parents got divorced a few years ago, which sucked. I mostly live with my mom but spend weekends and some school breaks with my dad. Everything was okay until my dad started dating Jane. I don't have a lot in common with Jane and she's kind of pushy and invasive, like she has to always be involved in everything, whether it's anything to do with her or not. She has a son, 10 year old male, that's okay, but not happy about stuff either. It got worse when they got engaged and moved in last year. I thought at least I could just avoid them most of the time during the weekend, but Jane won't leave me alone. The big problem right now is that she doesn't like it when I speak Chinese at their house, because she can't understand it. She complains when I zoom my cousins or watch Chinese dramas on my phone. She says it's because she can't tell if I'm being appropriate but I tell her my dad understands me and it's his business, not hers. She whined about it to my dad, who asked if I would just speak English when I'm at their place to keep the peace and I said that I would always talk English in conversations with her, but I'm not going to stop speaking and listening to Chinese when it doesn't involve her and I'd stop coming over if that wasn't okay. My dad said that was fine and he'd talk to her. It caused a fight between them and she started loudly speaking over me or my shows in English instead. So I've stopped talking to her at all and I speak to my dad in Chinese and my stepbrother in English, which makes her big mad. She thinks I'm crap talking her, but I don't talk about her at all and my dad would tell me off if I was. It's stressing my dad out though, so maybe I'm being the jerk? Definitely not the jerk here and I'm sorry but if this is stressing your dad out, that's your dad's problem with Jane, not OP's fault at all, not OP's problem. Jane is literally so insecure and so nosy that they would rather try to put their foot down and force you to speak English and watch only English stuff so they can snoop and know everything, rather than just try to be comfortable around OP. Honestly, I think it would be super cool and it would be an opportunity for her and her son to kind of pick up some basic Mandarin. Our next story is from Loquacious Box 8284 Am I the jerk for lying about a food allergy? I'm vegan, have been for over 5 years. I'm lucky to live in a major city with a plethora of entirely or partially vegan restaurants, but when I visit my family in rural Pennsylvania, my options become non-existent. 
attitudes towards veganism here range from ignorance to outright hostility. I try to avoid eating out with my family when I'm home, at all costs. But sometimes it simply isn't avoidable. For example, my sister's wedding rehearsal dinner. My sister had her dinner at the foremost fine dining establishment in this town. It's a big old tavern that bills itself as a French-influenced steakhouse. Menu fare is every imaginable cut of steak drowned in butter, with some chicken and fish drowned in butter, plus sides of veggies and mashed potatoes that are, yes, smothered in butter. The one or two vegetarian dishes are buttered and drowned in creamy sauce. Given that my little brother used to wait tables here, I know that they frown upon substitutions and don't use much veggie oil for the sake of quality. I've had two negative experiences here too. I tried to explain my vegan diet my first time here, in depth, yet my sad little plate of steamed broccoli was drizzled with butter, and my iceberg lettuce salad came with ranch. The second time, a chef came out personally and promised me that his tomato pasta dish was vegan, only for me to find that they'd swirled parmesan cheese into the red sauce to disguise that they'd accidentally sprinkled it on top. That incident broke my trust completely. For my sister's dinner, I called ahead and told the chef that I have life-threatening food allergies to meat proteins, dairy including butter, and egg. Finally, they took me seriously. I was served a dish of plain pasta with salt and pepper with fruit, which sucked but I appreciated the consideration. For those allergies though, they had to scrub down the entire kitchen, clean the fryers, check the ingredient lists of their products, etc. That prep apparently cost them an extra two hours. And I didn't realize this. They charged my parents, who were paying for the rehearsal, an extra several hundred for their time. My sister and parents are livid. I already sent my mom the several hundred needed to cover the extra cost, but they're upset at me for lying and humiliating the chef and restaurant, whom they have close ties to. My sister's wedding is this weekend, and something tells me that it's going to be tense. Personally, I think that if this restaurant is going to continue with their ignorance and inconsideration, they got what they deserve. Am I the jerk for ensuring my needs are met? I think OP is the jerk here. I think whether or not it's a place that OP personally picked out, or a place that OP just continuously gets invited to, at the end of the day, it's a steakhouse. OP is fighting so hard to show up this for not catering super well to vegan options. It's just not really what they do. So for OP to go and lie about a life-threatening food allergy that is very serious for a lot of people, make the workers' jobs there ten times harder, and then after the fact say they got what they deserved. Congratulations, you made a steakhouse bend over backwards to give you a vegan option. The only part where I don't think OP is the jerk is when they asked for something and they got something that they were lied to about. That, if you did have a food allergy to something like that, could have been lawsuit worthy. If there was anybody to truly complain about, it would be complaining to the people that keep bringing you to this place, and telling those people how they just cannot reasonably accommodate you. Our next story is from Date Plates. Am I the jerk for asking for matching plates for my girlfriend? I've been dating Mia, and she's my world. Mia has OCD and likes to eat off matching plates and cutlery. She finds patterns too distracting, and it upsets her. My sister hosts Thanksgiving and has a bunch of different theme plates none that match well. I told her I want to bring Mia, but I was wondering if she could use different plates or even paper plates of one color. My sister's personality trait is to be that quirky, vintage, thrift girl, and her husband is the kind of hipster douche. I told them on how to make my girlfriend feel welcome in the family, and that having paper plates isn't that big of a deal or cheap white plates. The argument was heated and it got to Christmas, and my mom who owes Christmas said she's not giving up her Christmas plates either. It came down to be that I know my girlfriend's anxieties and OCD would be triggered in this noisy chaos that our holidays are. I told my mom and sister that I would spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with my girlfriend, and both said that's the best. I was upset by their response to not making her feel welcome. I didn't think asking for paper plates was that big of a deal, and I know many people that do that on the holidays. While maybe this isn't necessarily the hardest thing to accommodate for, if it's something they just don't want to, I just I don't think they can be jerks for not wanting to get special cutlery or plates because of the issue. Honestly, I really appreciate OP doing their best to look out for their girlfriend, but 
I feel like this issue is one that needs to be worked on and improved if they want to be a part of a greater family event like this because it's just not always going to be possible to cater to a situation like this where you have 20 matching dinner plate sets or you use nothing but paper plates. Honestly, I also kind of don't blame them because I've had some family that have special like Christmas cutlery and stuff. I don't know, maybe I got some old mom or grandma energy in me, but I kind of like the vibe of pulling out special plates and cutlery for a certain season, really submitting to being festive. Our next story is from throwaway69509765. Am I the jerk for giving my brother and his wife two days to return my piano? I, female 32, developed an interest for piano after meeting my late husband, who was a piano teacher for seven years. He taught me to play it and he helped me buy one, used one but still a bit expensive, two years ago. I play it every day. After his passing six months ago, I just find comfort spending time playing. However, my brother and his wife, who came to stay with me for two months after losing their apartment, always complain about the piano noise, although I only play at daytime. Sister-in-law and I started arguing more frequently, and my brother told me to only play it when they're out, but I refused. Yesterday I was out with friends for the day, and then I came in the evening and found my piano was gone. Turns out my brother had moved it to a friend's garage, I don't know which friend, while I was gone. I blew up at him and yelled that he had no right to touch it or move it. His wife said they did this as a last ditch effort to get some peace and quiet in the house. My brother reassured me that he'll give it back once he finds his own place, and I get to live alone and play the piano all day long. He was sarcastic in his last line, and I couldn't take it. I told them to pack and leave my house because they were no longer welcome after this. He freaked out and tried begging me to take it easy and be more rational, but I threatened to call the police if they refused to leave. He took his family and left. The piano still isn't back, and they're saying they'd give it back if I agreed to let them move back in, basically wanting things to go back to how they were when they were complaining about the noise. They believe that what happened was a misunderstanding, and every one of us mishandled the situation, so they want to start new. I lost it and told them they have two days to return it, or I'll call the cops on them. Mom's pressuring me to take them back, saying it was my fault for not having any consideration for them as my guests to begin with, but I refused to take them back and put my foot down on the timeline I gave. Now I'm being called irrational and cruel to kick my brother out, watch him struggle, and refuse to let him move back in and choosing to escalate this to the authorities when I could just let them move back in and I get my piano back. I don't blame OP at all, I think OP is clearly not the jerk here, and it is such antagonizing BS for them to say, chill chill chill, I think every one of us mishandled the situation. No, they need to own it, apologize, give the piano back, and then they probably need to drop to their knees and start begging even harder for a chance to even move back in. For the mom to hit them up and say, oh it's your fault. For them to say, oh everyone handled this wrong. No no no. They stole from OP, they need to get it back right away and maybe still figure out a new place to live. But that's just how I feel about it. I'm not gonna lie, with the way the mom hit OP up, I'd probably want to go call the brother and say, you know what, mom tried to blame it on me, I don't know if you were lobbying her to do that, but now I'm giving you a day and a half. And the next time somebody tries to blame my missing piano on me, that time will continue to drop. Our next story is from Unclean Food AIT. Am I the jerk for telling my sister that her food is disgustingly inedible? A few weeks ago, my apartment flooded. Unfortunately, this has left me without a place to stay for a few weeks, and many things I have to pay to replace and repair. It's been a crappy few weeks to say the least. My sister told me I could stay with her for a few weeks until everything gets sorted out. To be honest, I'm not the closest with my sister, but I didn't mind sharing a space with her. She was nice enough to give me a place to stay, for no charge, so I can't really complain. My sister, and I mean this literally, is a terrible cook. It's not only that her food lacks any seasoning, it's almost always inedible. She cooks with expired ingredients and doesn't believe in throwing anything away. It's unhealthy and disgusting. I'm honestly afraid of touching things in her fridge or eating anything in her fridge. This wouldn't be much of a problem if she let me cook my own food and buy my own ingredients, but she believes that it's rude for guests to cook their own food and hates me for touching her stove. Every time I suggest cooking my own food, she gets really angry. 
and starts yelling at me for no reason. I was getting tired of eating instant ramen noodles for all meals, and ordering food is expensive. My girlfriend kindly brought me home-cooked food after I told her about my situation. She made me kimbap, Korean rice rolls, some rice and kimchi, fermented cabbage. It was more than enough food, and I was so happy that I could finally eat some real food. I was eating rice and kimchi for lunch, and the second my sister entered, she told me it looked like I was eating dog food. She even complained that I was making her apartment smell like dog food. I thought this was ironic. She keeps rotten food for weeks, and I'm apparently the one who's stinking her house up. I was going to ignore her and wear my headphones, but she was mumbling stuff about how I was eating food and that I was ruining the sanctity of her home. I was tired of listening to her complain about my girlfriend's food. I told her verbatim that I wouldn't have to rely on my girlfriend if she didn't make food that a stray dog wouldn't touch, and that she should stop being a selfish, inconsiderate witch and let people touch her stove. Her food is disgustingly inedible. She got incredibly angry and hasn't spoken to me since. My girlfriend told me I should have chosen my words more carefully. I agree with OP's girlfriend. I hesitantly say that both sides are jerks. What OP said was just too far over the line, and I think maybe OP was kind of putting up with it a little too easily. I mean, I know the sisters willingly giving up their space and it's really nice of them, but I think at some point OP needed to put their foot down and say, hey, I just am not vibing with this cooking, and then maybe just focus on trying to bring stuff in if they don't want you to touch their stove at all. Our next story is from Super Secret 235 Am I the jerk for wanting my neighbor to remove her ring doorbell? I've been living in my apartment complex for two years and it's been wonderful. Recently, a young woman moved in across from my apartment. We introduced briefly and apart from the noise made when she was having movers bring in her things, she's very quiet and polite. However, there's one thing that bothers me. She has a ring doorbell on her door. Recently, I saw her leaving and asked her why she had it and that I was worried that she could see in my apartment. She said she had it for packages and due to no peepholes on the doors, just extra security. She showed me that yes, it can see my door a bit, but assured me she's not on her phone all day checking it. I expressed my uncomfortableness and asked her to remove it. She told me that she was sorry I was uncomfortable, but she wasn't spying on me and had a right to have one up. She wasn't breaking her lease and she'd seen other people in the complex have one. I told her, I don't care about other people, I want it gone or I'll be reporting her. She told me not to bother and called our property manager regarding it because I got a visit from her asking to leave her and the doorbell situation alone. Am I really out of line for this? As somebody that endlessly values having security cameras, let alone a doorbell camera, OP is a major jerk. I'm sorry if they can see into your apartment when you open your front door, but if anybody's standing there, they can see into your apartment. Do you have like bags and bags of drugs sitting by the front door or something? And our final story of the day is from Local Lab 2499 Am I the jerk for yelling at my pregnant sister because she ate my dinner? I, female 18, live with my mom and stepdad, and my older sister Lily, female 24. Lily's around 6 months pregnant with her first baby and moved back in after her boyfriend dumped her. After a long day at uni lectures, I came home and made myself dinner. After putting it on a plate, I left in the kitchen whilst I went to the toilet and I got distracted because the family dog needed to be let outside to go pee. By the time I got back to the kitchen, Lily had eaten my dinner. I told Lily that that was my dinner and she just stared at me in silence. I went to go make some cup noodles and told Lily this was annoying. Lily said she was hungry and said she's eating for two and told me to shut my mouth. I started yelling at Lily and told her she should be apologizing after eating my dinner and that maybe she should learn how to cook for herself if she's so darn hungry. Lily started screaming at me like a demon to the point where I didn't understand what she was saying and grabbed my cup noodles and threw them out the window, leaving me dinnerless and cup noodleless. Lily stormed out and went into her room. I told my mom and stepdad what happened as they were very confused by the commotion. My mom told me I escalated the situation by yelling at her and by my comments and I should apologize to Lily and I should apologize to Lily and that she's probably just hormonal. I don't think Lily's owed an apology. I think she was just being a jerk. But what do you guys think? 
I think OP is definitely not the jerk. Whether you're pregnant or hormonal, I think you still have enough resolve in your mind to understand that somebody else's food sitting in the kitchen is not their food and that somebody else probably prepared it for a reason. Maybe when OP flared up they were a little extra, but I don't think it makes them the jerk. And I do think OP is owed an apology. You can't use pregnancy as a crutch for taking other people's things. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.